Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper here with Audio Thing, and I'd like to introduce you to the newest effect in their mini line of plugins. It's called Miniverb, and it's an 8-bit chiptune lo-fi reverb effect based on the old school NES and Super NES gaming consoles. So those early consoles didn't have much power for DSP effects, and what the game composers had to do was improvise. And what they did was to get a sense of space or reverb by sacrificing a complete audio track and then just duplicating the original audio track, pushing it back a little bit in time and turning it down. And I'm going to show you ways to manipulate the NES and the Super NES versions of the echo or reverb inside of this tutorial. And I'm also gonna go through each and every one of these modules here so you can get a good understanding of what's available inside of Miniverb. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm gonna go ahead and solo the track. I've just got Minibit, which is the first product in the mini line from Audio Thing, and it's just playing this nice melody. And then I've added Miniverb. So it's giving me that nice lo-fi echo slash reverby sound. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. We've got two filters. We've got a pre and post filter system. They work the same way. Obviously one's in the beginning of the effects chain and one is at the end. We've got low pass or high pass filters. You just change them by clicking right here. We've got our standard cutoff and resonance knobs as well. And if you just wanna bypass them, meaning you don't want to use the filters, you can easily turn them off or turn them on using the power buttons. Each one of the modules have that power button as well, uh, including echo, crusher, and vibrato, obviously excluding the mix module. Next up from there, we've got the echo module, and this is kind of the heart of Miniverb. This is where things get really cool. We can sync the time to the host tempo by clicking the little musical note right here. You can see right now, as I'm moving this below the dial, there are the different sync rates. If I turn that off, it's now in milliseconds. This right here with the little number two is how many delay lines there are. So let's go ahead and crank up the wet signal, maybe turn down the dry signal just a little bit, just so we can really hear what's going on in the background. And for right now, let's just go ahead and turn off the crusher as well. So as you can see here, definitely a lo-fi effect, but if we're looking for that NES style reverb, we want to switch it to one delay line. We want to turn the time down very low, turn the feedback completely off, and set the width down to mono. So you can see how it's making it sound bigger and making it almost sound like a reverb. And all it's really doing is duplicating that original signal at a very short time frame once and only doing it on that one track. And with the help of the pre and post filter system, that's what's giving us that sense of depth and reverb. If we're looking for the Super NES style, we wanna put a longer time and maybe a little bit of feedback. So let's go from NES to Super NES. So it's a very, very cool effect. It's a very subtle effect, but it's definitely getting the job done for what we're looking for. If we want to go with a more modern approach, that would be two delay lines and where we can really crank up the time, push up their feedback and widen up the signal. So 
So that is very, very cool. And again, that's at the heart of mini verb, getting those old school gaming console style reverb and echoes. We also have some modern twists on that, and that is the vibrato effect. So you can further push it into the realm of lo-fi by using that. Uh, we've got rate, which is how fast the vibrato happens, and the depth, which is how far up and down the vibrato goes. So depth, you can look at this kind of like a strength knob. The higher up to 100%, it's gonna be way more apparent. While lower values are gonna be less apparent, but still be affecting the sound. And here we have a bit crusher. We've got bits, down sampling, and a shifter. Bits has to do with bit depth. You can see we can go from two bits up to 24 bits. If you do turn it on, 24 bits is gonna be the smoothest. While getting down to those lower bits is obviously gonna be a lot crazier and a lot more grimy. Down sample has to do with sample rates. So here it's kind of like the opposite. The further you go up here, the crazier the effect will become, while the lower numbers are going to have a slight effect to the sound. The shifter is for pitch shifting. So obviously you can get some very, very cool effects using that as well. Then we have the dry and wet knobs, which just is the mix between the dry and the wet signal. There are a few other things I want to bring your attention to. One is the randomize button. And before you start clicking that, you might want to jump into the menu here and turn on the built-in limiter. That way, if something gets crazy, you're not going to be blowing anything. And another thing you can do as well is lock the dry and the wet. This is gonna be useful if you're gonna be using that randomized feature or if you have mini verb on a return track and you just wanna be flipping through some of the built-in presets. Speaking of those, if you come in, you see we have presets for echoes, lo-fi, modulation, reverbs, and some crazy effects. So that's a quick look at mini verb and its many modules. If you're looking for that lo-fi, old school, classic 80s style reverb effect, Miniverb's got you covered. Anything you want, you can do with Miniverb. It's available now on audiothing.com. Links in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper here. I hope you learned something. We will see you next time.